What's up guys? Welcome to Billionaire Punjabi Boys. We got the first pod in. We have a guest that is known throughout the mainland. The one of the greatest real estate agents on social media. We've got Connor Kelly. What's up? What's up, dude? Welcome, brother. Yeah. How are you? I'm good, man. How about you? Good. It's been long coming. Eh? We've been trying to do this for quite a bit. Yeah. And it just have. gets my tire punctures. Shit happens. It's almost like it wasn't meant to be, but here we are, bro. Yeah, always. Yeah. No, I know, so. I know you, you've been supporting me on my YouTube channel. I'm trying to grow that YouTube channel now. <laughs> yeah. You've supporting me since I had like probably like, fifth, like 15 subs yeah. or something like that. I remember, I'll tell so. you a quick story. Uh, first time I watched your video, was I was working at a car dealership. And I was like, I hate doing cold calls. Hated it. And I was getting my real estate license too. Then I saw your TikTok. I'm like, this guy's doing something. And you had a radio voice. Yeah. <laughs> this, do, you, this, do people say that to you? Dude, people say that to me on my podcast all the time. I never thought I did, but apparently. And I was talking to my dad about it. I'm interviewing Connor Kelly. And he was like, this guy straight in the face <laughs> hits you. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. He's like, my dad's like, he's annoying sometimes, but I like it. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I'm going to start with the beginning. Let's start from grade one to grade 10. How was your life like? Where did you grow up and all that? Just give me a brief. Yeah, man. I grew up in Surrey, obviously. I'd say my life was pretty good, man. I mean, my parents were, were really good parents. They're still together, so I didn't have to deal with a divorce or anything like that. Um, I've got four brothers, one sister. Uh, they, a lot of the times, were up to no good, so there's some turmoil in the family because of that sometimes. Yeah. But other than that, it was overall really good. And then got into high school, started hanging out with the wrong crowd, doing all that kind of stuff, right? Did so, you do something bad? Oh, uh, I've done quite a few bad things, to be honest with you. And um, obviously grew out of that, learned the type of person that I didn't want to be, yeah. right, from doing all that stuff. And um, those are all very valuable life lessons. Yeah, what were say. you passionate about? Let's say, you know, in grade 9 or 10, there are lots of trades and all that stuff in high school. Here. What were you doing? Dude, I was playing video games. Video games? That's it, dude. Which video game were you playing? I was playing World of Warcraft, CS. <laughs> Back then it was Counter-Strike Source. That was and in high school? That was in high school. Did uh, they let you guys play that or? No, like not like in the high school. Yeah, like, yeah. After high school, I'd go home, I'd pretty much just played video games like all day long until like grade 11, 12. Yeah. Then I started hanging out with the wrong crowd and doing the wrong oh, okay. stuff. But up until that point, I was like the number one mage in World of Warcraft for like five years. Did you skip classes? Oh, yeah, of course. I was, but dude, I, they gave me an 8% in art. I got, you, that was my final grade was 8%. 8%? 8%. In art? In art. Because wow. I, I just wasn't there. I never went there. Wow, that, that's crazy. Yeah. And how was like, uh, let's say you were in grade 10, were you doing any trades classes, anything? Nothing. Nothing like that. I mean, my dad was a mechanic, my older brother's a mechanic, yeah. so... And they were like, don't be a mechanic, yeah. right? Because if you're a mechanic, the cars get basically more robust and harder to service yeah. as they get more advanced. Yeah. Well, plumbing actually gets easier because they just make more advanced tools to help yeah. you do the plumbing, right? So they were like, don't be a mechanic, be a plumber. So I went into plumbing and honestly, I would say it was the right decision. Um, you did plumbing. Let's go before that. Let's say you're in grade 10, right? Grade 11 is coming up. Were you thinking about what I want to do with my life? Were you planning something, anything? Nothing. I was just getting up to no good. Smoking weed and hanging out with my friends. That's all. That's it. How'd you get the money for that? Were you working? That's so no, I wasn't working. My parents would sometimes give me like, here's 20 bucks. And then okay. I'd, we'd always hang out in groups of like eight people. Somebody always had money. Okay. Did you say them you're going to go watch a movie or you're going to smoke weed? Oh, I'd lie about everything. Yeah. You, <laughs> know, you, you know how it is when you're a teenager. All you do is lie to your parents. What did you say to them? Freaking, well, half the time it'd be like, we're going to school. And then yeah. we'd just show up and not go to school. Okay. <laughs> and just, she would drop me off and I'd just instantly leave. And that was it. I have a follow-up question to that. Let's say you skip classes, right? At six, I remember back in the day, high school in Surrey, right? At sharp 6.30, you used to get an automated call. Yeah. That your kid has skipped this, this class. What did you used to do about that? So the automated calls, they weren't very consistent with it. So they okay. would only send one every like couple times you skipped right okay. so then i'd always have some type of excuse for why i skipped that class or oh i was sick like last week and they must have sent it for last week or <laughs> whatever, i got i right? got caught a couple times yeah. i was sitting at tim Hortons and 
Yeah, you know, Indian parents are. God, I, I, I know, I was sitting in the McDonald's and then liaison <laughs> officer comes in and you're just done, right? But, yeah. Well, let's say you get out of grade 12. What, what did you, let's say your high school's finished. What was after that? Let's, what was first month like after you're done with high school? What did you do? So I actually went into plumbing school right away. Right away. Like a week or two after high school. Decided that I absolutely hated plumbing. Okay. Uh, so after that six month course, then I actually went and worked for a company called Tybo, which Tybo. is like a construction company. I just like swept the floors and stuff for them. So you, when you did go into plumbing, were you working for some company or were you? I was just in the school. Oh, just in it's school. It's like a six month like foundation program. Okay. Right. And then uh, I finished that. And then actually, no, I was a bricklayer for six months. Bricklayer. That was, dude, I can't believe people lay bricks. Like that job is unreal hard. Is that brick with the concrete, right? Exactly. Okay. Or like, you know, brick or, uh, you know, like um, firewall block, like cinder blocks. Yeah, yeah. You're working outside. It's pissing rain and you're just carrying cinder block all day. It's just like, it's How terrible. much did that pay you? I think I made like 14 bucks an hour doing that. What were you doing with that money? Nothing. Nothing? Just saving up? I think I saved some of it and then I spent some of it on stupid stuff. Got it. Yeah. And then let's say after you done the high school, right? Six, seven months later, what were you doing then? Same thing I was doing in high school. <laughs> same thing? <laughs> yeah, same exact thing I was doing in high school. And let's go a year after that. What were you doing? So a year after that, I think it was, yeah, a year after that, I actually went back. Shit. I'm gonna cut. Should probably check mine too. A, okay. year, a year after that, I, uh, I actually went back into plumbing because I did bricklaying. I was like, this is yeah. terrible. I worked at Tybo for like six months. They wouldn't give me a raise. Yeah. I was like, okay, screw these guys. And I'm like, I'm gonna, I might as well use this plumbing ticket I have. So I went back into plumbing yeah. for this level one certification that I have. And I went and worked for a company called Mr. Rooter. Mr. Rooter. And I, I dug holes for 12 bucks an hour. And then eventually worked my way up to the point where they made me a technician. They gave yeah. me a van and I worked on commission. Okay. And then uh, I made 50 grand basically my first year on commission, which is um, like, that was good money back then. This yeah. Was like 20, when was that? What year? 2013 or 2014. 2013. And I was 19 years old at this point. 19 years old and yeah. you're making this sort made, of money. I made 50 grand because I found a hack. All right, I found this hack where every house has a pressure regulating valve. When okay. the water comes in, yeah. it takes it, the city pressure is usually about 100 pounds to 120 PSI. Yeah. That valve will regulate it down to like 50 to 60 pounds. Okay. So what I would do is I found a way where any house I went into, and this isn't ethical at all, by the way, and I don't operate my life like this now, <laughs> but this, I was, the hierarchy that I was working under told me do whatever it takes to sell stuff and I yeah. was young and impressionable so I was just like, all right, I'll listen to this guy. Yeah. So I found a way where any, for any reason I got called to your house, yeah. I could somehow make a story to relate it back to the pressure regulating valve. So shop. did you regulate it a bit or not? I would change them all. Well, you were changing them all. I probably changed like 400 perfectly working pressure regulating valves. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> That's all I did and they were, they were like 500 bucks a pop. So I'd go there, I'd fix the initial issue, I'd sell a pressure regulator, I'd make like 200 bucks in like yeah. an hour and a half, two hours, and I'd go do, you know, two of those a day, and that was that. So you're 19 and making 50 grand a year. Yeah, I think I made like 53,000 so or something like that. So what were you doing? So at that, that point, money? then I started saving money, because I knew I was like, I wanted to own rental property, because my parents had talked about it. Yeah, yeah. And here in Vancouver, like, you know it too. It's just like yeah. everybody just talks yeah. about real estate. Yeah. Everyone knows about real estate. Yeah. Even like people are like, like kids that are like 10 years old. know. I think 90% of the households you go to, let's say you're sitting at a party or anywhere you go, there's 99% chance they're going to talk about real estate. At some point, yeah. somebody's going to mention real estate, yeah. right? So I just knew that rental property was the way to go. So I started saving up and then... Um, that yeah. was 29... What, what age was that? 2019, I would have been... How old was I in 2019? I think it was 19. No, sorry, not 2019. 2014. 2014. Was 19. So 19. Th that's all 19 years old. That was 19. What was the when you're 19, right? You're young. Yeah. When you had 50 grand in the bank account, sometimes you think you want to do something stupid. Did yeah. you did you made a stupid mistake with that money? No, I actually didn't. For I don't know why, but for some reason I just started getting like motivated right around 19 to like actually make something out of my life, and I saved. Pretty much every penny I got, 
I was also doing side work too. So on okay. top on top of the like fifty two thousand that I actually made, <clears throat> yeah, you know, off the off, well, this is on the record now. But I was doing cash jobs too. Okay, right. So I made a little bit extra there too, and I was just saving everything. I bought a truck for like ten thousand bucks cash, and then which that, truck was it? It was a two thousand seven Ford Harley Davidson. Uh, which is, they're actually really sick. They were yeah. like top of the line in 07. It was like an $80,000 truck in 07. Wow. But I bought it for 10 grand in 2014. But you were 19, you made 50 grand. You didn't, you didn't buy anything that was stupid. Nothing. Nothing crazy, like a gold chain. Nothing. How, how could you resist that? I've seen lots of 19 years old. They want it. They have 50 grand or at least let's say 10 grand. Mm -hmm. They want to buy a brand new challenger or a charger. Yeah, that's a sorry thing. Yeah, yeah, definitely. How did you resist that? Man, I've just always been really good at delaying gratification. Like yeah. even when I was young playing these video games. Yeah, the reason why I was able to be so much better than everybody else at playing the video game is because yeah. everyone wanted to do the fun stuff in the video game and yeah. I'd be there doing the hard stuff to like make, make my character better. Right. Okay. So I was always into delayed gratification. I just took that same approach when I started making money. I was yeah. like, hey, if I just don't spend this, I'll have more money later to buy something that makes me money that I don't have to actually make, right? Got so it. I understood that at 19. I just was just saving everything. And then that's basically by 22, I was able to buy my first property. So before that, there are you Red Seal? Yeah. Okay, and when did you become a full Red Seal? 22. 22. Yeah. And let's say you were, became a full red seal at 22. How much money were you making by then? I think my fr it was 32 bucks an hour, but I was working a lot of overtime. Okay. So like as an example, when I was making 26, yeah. I made almost 90 grand that year when I was making 26 bucks $9,000. Like that's how much overtime I was, I was wow. working, right? And that was consistent or uh, every year was different? Every year was different because okay. I was also getting pay, pay increases. How much right? did it fluctuate? Oh, like it just went up every year. It just went up. It just went up, yeah. And what were you doing with that money? That was all, I was just saving everything. Were you living with your parents that time or you? No, so my parents basically kicked me out at like 21. Really? They didn't actually like kick me out. They were just like, hey, we're selling the house and moving to Chilliwack, figure yeah. out your, your shit kind of thing, right? So how does that happen? I've never, uh, it, from an Indian background, yeah. right? Your parents want you, most of them, right? They want you to stay, uh, stay at the same spot. And how does that happen? They kick you out. How does that usually work? Dude, white parents aren't like that. That's brown. White parents are like, all right, you're 21, you're 22. You can fend for yourself. Get the hell out of my house. Do they just right? say, yeah, you need to get out? Get out, right? So th they didn't actually say that, but they, they were just like, hey, they wanted to move to Chilliwack. We're selling the house. They were like, figure it out. And I, okay. we, were like, we were living in Surrey. So I was like, I'm not moving to Chilliwack. Like, yeah. I'm a plumber. Like I need to do plumbing out here. Like, I'm not going to yeah. drive like an hour and a half to work every day. So. I ended up renting a bedroom. Uh, me and my girlfriend split the rent of a bedroom at her dad's place. And it was wow. like 600 bucks a month, which was awesome. Like I'm yeah. glad we had that opportunity and everything. And that was, that was sweet. But given the opportunity, most people would probably just go yeah. rent a basement suite the for question like 750. Is, the question is, do you have the same girlfriend or? Yeah, yeah, we're still together. Yeah, uh, actually, that, that's great. I proposed a while back, like really? six months ago. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah. I draw, I put the ring in champagne. Or I had, we went to, we went to Joe Forte's and I had the waiter put the ring in champagne. Wow, that's yeah, crazy. James Bond styles. That, that's yeah. awesome. So, but uh, yeah, we rented that room for 600 bucks a month. And then um, I was just putting everything away. I was saving all that money, I saved yeah. up like 67 grand. And I was able to buy that first place. So you bought first place at what age? 20. Uh, turning 23. 23. So what did you buy? Two bed, two bath apartment in Abbotsford, fully renovated, but it's 1980s. 1980s. No in-suite laundry. Okay. Uh, if I could go back, I would have just spent extra money and bought something that had laundry. But yeah. my ideology was if I can get, just get into the market and keep my, more, my expenses lower, yeah. then I can save more money to invest. Got it. It's kind and of my ideology. Did you rent that place or were you living in that? I'm still living there now. You're still living there. Yeah. And... Uh, how much down payment did you do? It was, I think it was 57,000. 57. 57. Yeah. Was there a rule like you have to put 5% or 20%? What was the rule back then? When you, you I think you could do less than 20% at less that than time. 20%. I just, I just was told to do 20% and that's all I knew. Okay. Yeah. And then, uh, first property you bought, you were plumber. Let's say you're making $90,000 a year. You're a red seal technician. So what was after that? Then I bought the property in Windsor, Ontario. So you bought a second property. Yeah, a year later, I was able to buy a second property in Windsor, Ontario. How did you? How do you do that? Like buy a property in a, another province? 
Dude, you just gotta have a good realtor and a good property manager. That's it, it's really easy, man. People overcomplicate it. Yeah. People wanna see the property. Like, the inspector is gonna tell you yeah. everything that's wrong with the property. You don't have to see it. They're gonna give you like a 400 page inspection yeah. report of the property. Well, what made you choose Windsor? Uh, at the time, it just made sense. It was really cheap, the rents were really high, and it was a growing economy. And that, that, that market has basically 3 x since like 2019. Wow. And you bought a single family detached? Yeah. How much was it? It was 150. 150 for and a single family detached. And it, yeah, and it rented for I think it rented for 1350 a month when I first bought it. 13. So almost 1% rule. Yeah. And then now today it's worth like 300 something and it rents for 1600. Wow, you you've made a lot of money. <clears throat> yeah, like that investment could not like for I only put like 30 grand down, right? Was it a rancher? No, I don't even know how to explain it. All the homes there are really old. Yeah. So my house is built in like 1914. 1914. Yeah, but that's is, normal. Is there. it still there? Yeah. Okay. And it's like fully renovated. But it's, it's fully like, renovated. But it's 1914. How many bedrooms? It's only two bed, one bath. Two bed, one bath. That's it. Wow. And yeah. that was the second property. That was the second one. It's probably uh, cash flowing right now. It cash flows about 700 bucks a month. 700 dollars a month. Yeah. So after that, you bought your second property. What were you doing? What was your daily routine? Like, what age was that? That would have been 23. 23. 20, 23, yeah. You were 23 years old? Or? Yeah, 23 years old there. What year was it? That would have been 2019. So that was 2019. Yeah. And what was your daily life like after, let's say, you bought two properties, two-bedroom apartment in Abbotsford and a two-bedroom home in... Windsor, Ontario. Yeah. And what was after that? What was your daily life like? It was a brutal grind, bro. I was working like 12 to, you know, probably, t I want to, not 10, 12 to 14, maybe 10 to 12 hours a day. But I was driving from Abbotsford to downtown Vancouver every day, yeah. sometimes two or three times a day. Because wow. I was on call, yeah. night shifts, whatever. Like I was just grinding. My body, I was exhausted. My body was broken down. But again, I was putting away a lot of money. Yeah. And I was able to buy a third property. What what made you keep going when you're you know commuting from Abbotsford to downtown Vancouver? Lots of traffic in the way. I think at some point, let's say you do it for two weeks, right? It's okay. You get frustrated with the traffic. What was key, what was the motivation behind it? Freedom, man. Just knowing that, hey, if I did this for yeah. long enough, then eventually I'd own enough assets that I don't have to do anything. Wow. If I don't want to. Yeah. Right. Uh, unfortunately. What I later realized is that I'm gonna have to do this for like 10 years. Yeah. And I hate my life right now. Why am I gonna hate my life for 10 years? It just doesn't make any sense. So you hated doing plumbing? I hated but it. But you only did it because of the money, right? That was it, golden handcuffs. So what was the third property you bought after that? So what I, year was it? This would have been 2020 that I bought a detached house in Edmonton as a flip, actually. Okay. Everything went wrong with this house. Like everything. So what, what, uh, what was the mindset? Lots of people, let's say someone like a normal person, right? They make this kind of money. They want to buy a house. They buy a house and they sit on it for the longest time. And you were buying properties out of province one and Windsor one and yeah. Edmonton. What, what was the mindset behind that? Scalability. I mean, to buy a property in Vancouver for one, like, now I have, you know, an income where buying property here makes sense. But yeah. back then, the problem is you buy a property, it's going to be cash flow negative, like five, six hundred bucks a month. Yeah. You know, on a nine to five salary, stomaching an extra five to six hundred bucks a month to yeah. subsidize that investment is like, it hurts. Right. And then not only that, if the tenant stops paying, you're like yeah. completely screwed. Yeah. So I'm like, I didn't want that to happen. So I'm like, I'm just going to buy in these other provinces where they cash flow. And then I'm just going to scale that way. And plus they're way cheaper so I can buy them more often. Right. So that was my mindset behind that. And then it, what went wrong with that property? The third Dude, one. everything went wrong. Like Edmonton is not like here, right? Um, it's a lot harder to sell a property as it is. Like seasonality matters so yeah. much during like the winter. Like people aren't shopping for houses when it's negative 42 degrees outside. No, they are not. Right? No. So like the city tore up the freaking cul-de-sac in front of the house for like six months. They were tearing it up. The contractors got COVID like three times. We had to close down the site. Um, just like a whole bunch of stuff. I can't even remember all of them now, but it was like one thing after another kept happening. We had an accepted offer, it collapsed, and then we finally sold it after two years, and 
I made money on it, but it wasn't good. So you bought a brand new place? No, we, we bought, it was, it was a flip, so. It was a flip, yeah, okay. Yeah, it wasn't in good condition. We renovated it. And then, okay. Yeah. So how do you find, let's, you buying a property out of province. How, how are you finding those contractors and trusting them, right, with your property? We had boots on the ground out there. So we, oh, yeah. we, we knew a guy that flipped property out there. And okay. He brought a deal to us. We're like, all right, let's be the money in it and just see, see how it goes. So let's say anyone watching from the audience, they want to buy a property in Edmonton, like a flip you did. Can you help them? I can send them to the guy. For, okay. For definitely. Got it. Yeah. And then after third property you sold, when did you sell that? Last year. Last year. Yeah. And do you own any other properties? Just two right now. Just two right now. I'm actually going to sell the one in Windsor because I want to buy a detached house in Abbotsford now. Okay. Yeah. yeah that, that's one up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm, the way I look at it is like, okay, hey, well, right now I currently own like 600 grand, no, 700 grand worth of real estate roughly. Yeah. yeah. Well, if I sell that and buy this, I'll own like $1.5 million worth of real estate, right? That, that's a good start, right? That's the way I look yeah. at it, right? Because then on a percentage basis, yeah. oh, that 1.5 goes up 30%. Now I'm at like 1.9, whatever, right? And then uh, let's start with your real estate journey. You were doing plum bang, you had two houses. When did you, when was the first thought that came into your mind? I hate this. I want to change my job. I want to do something else. When was that? 2018. So I actually signed up for the real estate course. I didn't know about GoVC at that time. So okay. I was like coming home from work and reading through that dry ass textbook that they give you. This thick. The, it's like 2000 pages yeah. of like lawyer mumbo jumbo, right? Yeah. So I tried to get through the course. I was like, screw this. I don't even want to be a realtor anymore. So yeah. I did that for like a month and a half. I gave it up. And then come like 2020 again, I was like, it just, for some reason it was just calling me. I just knew I had to be a realtor. So yeah. I went back into the course, I found GoBC and I managed to get through it. So who, why, why was real, when, when did this thought came into mind? You were, let's say you're working someday, right? Real estate is totally different from plumbing. Mm -hmm. What made you choose real estate? I just loved the idea of like doing labor jobs is very grueling, man. Like waking up in the morning at 5 a.m. Yeah. And it's like, put on your uniform, drive here. And it's like the first thing out of, out of bed is like, yeah. get on your knees and start doing physical labor. Yeah. It's like, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. And like, not to put anyone down who's doing it, right? I have a lot of respect for people that do it because it's a hard job that requires a lot of grit. But I used to like, literally like driving my plumbing man, I used to visualize like, oh dude, it'd be so sick to just be a realtor. Yeah. And just like be driving to a showing. Yeah. Like, I know when I get there, I don't have to do anything that sucks. Yeah. I just show up, I'm like, this is the house, man. We could probably get it for this price, whatever. That's, I used to literally visualize, and at that point, I didn't even care about making money. Yeah. I just wanted to do something that like, that's what I wanted to do, you know what got I mean? Got it, and then what, do you remember the date or a month which you got your license? It was your first day as a real estate agent? August, August. Uh, la two Augusts ago. Two August. August ago. 2021. So two years ago. I think it was like the 6th of the 7th. What was your, let's say you become a real estate agent. What was your first month like? Terrible. What were you doing? Because you, you don't get told. So you become a real estate agent. No one tells you anything. You're on your own. That's it. Yeah. So what did you do? I made cold calls. I was calling like 75, making 75 calls a day. And yeah. I did that pretty much every day for the first month. Yeah. And then uh, I actually got a pre-sale under contract from a cold lead and then yeah. they, they backed out and ghosted me. So that one hurt. So you, were, did you join a team in the beginning yeah. or? So first day you joined the team. Yeah. Which team did you join? Team Zubor. Team Zubor. Yeah. With Stonehouse. With Stonehouse. Oh, all right. Yeah, yeah. Got it. And then uh, what, why did you not go solo? Why did you join a team? Because I'm not a systems guy. Okay. I know that. That's just not how I operate. Okay. You give me the system, show me what to do. I'll work harder than everybody else and, and get it done. So that any new agent watching this podcast, what would you recommend? Should they join a team in the beginning or should they go solo? Join a team in the beginning, 100%. Unless you've successfully ran a business before, Yeah. join a team. So you were doing cold calls in the beginning, yeah. 75 cold. Do you have a script or what were you saying on the phone? What was I saying? I was Cause it's just, a complete stranger, right? Yeah, I was just saying something like, uh, hey, what's up, man? I'd be like, okay, we'll role play. I'll be like, I'll be like, hey, is this Rashid? Yeah, speaking, who's this? 
Hey Rasheed, it's Connor with Stonehouse Realty. I know you're probably super busy right now, so I'll keep this super quick. We actually chatted like six months ago. You're looking at condos in Burnaby, so I just wanted to check back with you. See what is up with your real estate situation. Six months ago? When was that? I don't remember. Yeah, you, you probably don't remember chatting with me. It was a while back, but you're just yeah. looking at some two bedrooms in, in uh, Burnaby. Just wanted to follow up with you and just see if the, if the situation has changed. Uh, I was just thinking, maybe I'm at work. I'll give you a call in a week. In a week? Perfect. So if I call you in a week, what time works best? I don't know yet. Give me a call. Okay, so what is that like Wednesday, 2 p.m.? Yeah, just give me Thursday. Thursday, 2 yeah. p.m.? Yeah. All right, Rashid, I'll call you Thursday at 2 p.m. All right. Okay, man, peace. That's how you do it. <laughs> That's how you do it. I mean, like, people are going to be like that. But the reason why, I, that was my thing that yeah. I thought of was like, oh, we chatted like six months ago because I'd yeah. be calling an older lead pool. Okay. I didn't chat with that person. Okay. But people are a lot nicer to you when they think that you've yeah. already chatted. I think that <laughs> right? six months ago I yeah. called you. Yeah. No one remembers six months ago what happened. Well, the thing is, but they don't want to say that because yeah. they're like, oh, if I don't remember this guy, I'm a dick. That right? Is, so that, I should be nice to him. That is very smart. Yeah. And you were making how many calls a day? 75. 75. Yeah. Persistently. Yeah. I did that every day for like a month. You, so you got one lead out of it, but which ghosted you? Basically. Yeah. yeah and well, I got more leads, but like nothing really. Came so for prospecting, me. you were only doing cold calls. So what I started doing at some point was I implemented in my morning before I started my calls, I'd post a TikTok. Okay. And then those TikToks started getting views. Yeah. And they started getting comments and whatever. Yeah. And I didn't think I was going to get business from yeah. it. I just thought that like, it was cool. Pe people are like recognizing me. People are commenting on my stuff. I'm getting engagement from it. I'm like, that's dope. That's pretty much what you want from a realtor. It's yeah. the same as having like a bus bench ad, yeah, right? Yeah. So I'm like, I'm just gonna keep doing this. It takes me like 10 minutes to do it in the morning and I do my calls. And then a month and a half of doing that, the phone started ringing and then started actually selling properties from it. So your prospecting was cold calls and social media. Yeah. That's all you did. That's it. No open houses, nothing else. No. No door knocking. I door knock too. I door knock like once or twice a week. What did you, let's say you're door knocking, what, what did you do? I would door knock open houses. So if I had an open house, I'd just be like, hey, just wanted to pop by, let you know we listed your neighbor's place. Uh, just wanted to invite you to the open house, Saturday, yeah. Sunday, 12 to two, but also let you know, there's probably gonna be some traffic on the road. So like maybe you don't have the kids to play road hockey or whatever that yeah. day, but we'd love you to see you there, 12 to two, blah, blah, blah. And then when it sells, I'd come back and be like, Yo, we sold your neighbor's house for such and such price. If I could get you a price like that, would you consider leaving this beautiful neighborhood? What did they say? I got a couple yeses. So I did sell some properties from, from door knocking. Yeah. Yeah. I used to do the same thing, but when I used to leave, I used to ask them, have you thought of buying or selling real estate? Some of them told their motivation. Some of them shoved their door at me. But yeah. That's, like that. that's how yeah. she goes. And then after that, let's start with the social media journey. What prompted you to start social media? Because social media, it's not everyone's gameplay because it's very challenging to talk to a phone like that and you're speaking yeah. and you at the same time, at first you are not even looking at the lens. You're supposed to look at the lens. Yeah. You're looking at the, your face. Yeah. And which seems like you're looking down. What, what made you do social media? I just knew that, you know, I'd been listening to Gary Vee and I watched Meet Kevin and Graham Stephan and I watched how well it worked for all yeah. of these other people and that they were just making so much money off of social media. Yeah. And it's just the strongest marketing tool that any business has right now. So I'm like, why would I not just use the best marketing tool? Yeah. And it's completely free. Yeah. Right. I'm just going to start. My mindset was like, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to do this every day. Yeah. And then in three to five years, maybe I won't have to do cold calls anymore. And Luckily, then, like three to five years was actually like three months. Three months. Basically. But like I had planned for it to be three to five years. So the social media game for you started with TikTok. Yeah. First thing you did was TikTok. Yeah. Did you focus totally on TikTok? Didn't care of other platforms that say Instagram. You didn't use them often. I would post on my Instagram stories. Okay. And then on my my feed, I would post maybe once or twice a week. So what were you posting on TikTok in the beginning? I was just posting investing content, like Canadian investing content. Yeah. Um, I'd find a way to, to like joke around and stuff. I'd actually swear all the time on TikTok. Yeah. Like I used to swear a lot in my videos. Yeah. Now the spotlight has gotten a lot bigger. Yeah. So I have to watch what I say. <laughs> how, many, how many followers do you have on TikTok right now? Uh, almost 31,000. How long did it took you to get there? That's two years. Two years. Yeah. 
how many active people are watching your content monthly? Just give a rough number. Uh, it's, uh, it's about a million views a month. A million views every, a month. Every 28 days. Every 28 days. Yeah. How, roughly how many calls are you getting from your social media a month? 50 to 60. How, much, how many of those are converting into like actual real, real hot leads? Uh, well, I'm selling three to six homes a month, so. Three to six homes. Yeah. Just off TikTok. Yeah, pretty much. That is crazy. Yeah. And then you, how, what do you think, how your TikTok blew up? What did you think? What, what do you think is the main reason? I think it's just, it's gonna sound conceited, but I think it's just being different. Just being different? I think it's people, it's, I just have a different look than most realtors would have, right? Can you, can I, you elaborate a bit on that? I have tattoos, I'm edgy, I yeah. say controversial stuff, Yeah. I swear sometimes. Yeah. It's just not typically what you see from a realtor, right? And I always say different is better than better. Yeah, wearing a tank dog and making a video, no realtor does that. Yeah, exactly. And it's just being different, right? Yeah. And then you were doing mostly, your content is totally just educating the public. Were you yeah, doing personal or entertaining. A bit? entertaining. Yeah, a little bit of mostly education and then some entertainment. And then how many videos are you posting right now per week? Two a day, so 14 a week on TikTok. That's consistent. I've never missed. And that's bringing you three to six deals per month. Basically, yeah. Well, I also do YouTube and Instagram, but pretty much, yeah, most of it comes through. TikTok. What do you What do you think of Instagram? I don't like it personally. I don't, it's it's different than it's TikTok. It's tough, man. It's you know what? The only business I get from Instagram, yeah. realistically, is like friends and family. It's just retargeting my sphere. Yeah. And staying in front of my sphere. I feel like tic, uh, TikTok, if you compare it to Instagram, Instagram promotes beauty. Yeah. Have you have you noticed that, or just me? And it's it promotes beauty, and it also promotes like entertainment more yeah. than it does education. Yeah. Like Instagram is a lot of just entertainment. Like, it's more like it. It's more geared towards entertainment, posting lifestyle stuff and blah, blah, blah. Whereas like TikTok, oddly enough, like it's the opposite of what most people think. If you yeah. have like educational shit to say, yeah. it, it'll go far on TikTok. If yeah. you say it on Instagram, nobody really cares though for some reason. Yeah, I think TikTok is more, if your video is engaging, people watch it. And f as of right now, have you noticed this trend? I've noticed this. TikTok, let's say six, seven months ago, you post 10 to 15 second videos that used to get hit. Yeah. Now they're pushing to long form. Yeah. Have you noticed that? I have, yeah. And they're making it more SEO based. Too. Yeah. And have you changed your business plan regarding that or? I've changed the way I make videos. Okay. Um, not in the sense, I've just changed the way that I like set them up in terms of like the SEO structure, like yeah. adding captions and my, the way I uh, do my tags and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. But overall the way I shoot my videos, yeah. um, it's, it's evolved as I have evolved, but yeah. I haven't actively thought that like, oh, I need to change this yeah. or whatever, right? What's, what's your life goal? What do you want to accomplish? My current goal, they're always yeah. changing because yeah. I do be hitting them. Yeah. But uh, right now, it's be the most well-known realtor in Canada. That's my current goal. And I want to make a million dollars in a year. So. A million dollars a year. Yeah. And I'm going to uh, talk about personal life a bit. How do you think uh, it looks like you're very motivated mm -hmm. towards your business. Has that affected your personal life in some way, shape or form? Not giving your time to your uh, girlfriend, future wife? Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, but n not entirely because she's just on board with what I'm doing. She's okay. seen the results and she supports me in doing it. Um, I mean, I don't see a lot of my friends pretty much ever anymore. Yeah. Um, but I mean, the way that I, I'm a completely different person than I was like four or five years ago, right? So yeah. it's just like, I don't, I don't like to do all the stuff that I used to do. Like, okay. I don't like drinking. I don't even like having fun. Like working for me is fun. Like, You've that's, turned Graham Stephan, hey? Yeah. Just working all day. I just like to work. That's yeah. fun for me. Yeah. Right. And then you have a YouTube channel now, right? Yeah. So what? made you start a YouTube channel? Because I think YouTube is the best way to build a consistent business and consistently get eyeballs. Whereas TikTok, TikTok is, is great, but it doesn't really provide you leverage because uh, you shoot a video, the reach dies after yeah. like three days. No. If you shoot a good video on YouTube, that video could still be relevant and getting you leads 10 years from now. Yeah. So it gives you leverage in your business. Like the way that I look at it is every evergreen video I put out is somebody sitting in a call center just calling leads for me forever. 
Which which platform do you love the most and why? I definitely like TikTok the most. Why is that? It's just been unbelievable to me. Just I numbers, mean, right? Yeah, I can't hate on TikTok. It just it just gets me so many views. I get recognized and stuff everywhere I go yeah. now all over town because of TikTok. Yeah. Its algorithm is extremely powerful for local businesses. Yeah. It is by far the best for local businesses. Um, and yeah, I mean, to, to me, TikTok is the best. Yeah. Every content creator in the world would probably disagree with me, yeah. but to me, it's the best. Why, what platform do you think, as of so social media companies, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, which one is the hardest? To gain subscribers. Dude, I want to say like Instagram is probably the hardest now. Instagram? I feel like. I feel like you like YouTube is hard. Yeah. But at least you can see the growth. Yeah. And it, it's linear and it's slow, but you can yeah. see it happening. Whereas Instagram, you could just post a video every day for 30 days and just be like, nothing's even happened. I got like 40 bot followers. <laughs> wow. And now, now you have a podcast as well, right? Yeah. Well, what made you start that? Just easier content, easier. content that I don't have to think about, it yeah. just happens. Who was, your, who was your first guest on the podcast? Who was the first guest? I think it was Sean Zubor. Sean Zubor. So the thing I've seen is this is a new podcast that I started. I, before I reached out to you, I reached out to a couple big realtors. They were scared. The reason being it's a new podcast. They don't want to be the first one. Yeah. Like, do you have any examples? Why did you choose to be on this podcast? On this one? Yeah. I chose to be on this podcast for one, because you've supported my YouTube channel since day one, so yeah. I owe you one. But two, dude, my business plan since day one has literally been this. Get as many people as possible to know who I am. Yeah and somebody's gonna buy or sell a home with me. Totally. So by, by me doing this and you posting this wherever, yeah. even if it only gets 20 views, yeah. that's 20 people who didn't know who I was before. Yeah, totally, I agree right? that. Yeah, it's just risk factor, right? Lot, lots of people, I think they get successful. The drive dies. Yeah. They don't wanna do the same thing again that they did before. Yeah. Right? What does Connor Kelly like to do in his free time? Let's say you have, $10 million in your bank account. What would you do the next day? What would it, the day look like? If I had 10 million bucks, I'd probably go to a concert, but in a different city, I'd travel. I'd go to like freaking North Carolina or whatever. Yeah. Go to a Rod Wave concert, tour the city, whatever. Yeah. And then I'd probably go to some other city and do the same thing and go to another concert. I like concerts. Um, but other than that, like I don't really have any hobbies or anything like that. Do you like traveling? I wouldn't say I like, I've never really traveled. Okay. I'm sure I would like it. Yeah. So that's what I'd like to do. Got it. Yeah. And then, uh, what car do you drive? I drive a Dodge Ram, 2017 Dodge Ram. Yeah. Why is that? It's a long story, but ba basically I had a Lincoln before, an MKZ. Yeah. The engine blew up and then I had to trade it in. And then the only thing they had on the lot was a Dodge Ram. And I was like, you know what? Let's take the Dodge Ram. I live yeah. in Abbotsford anyways. What was, the, so in your first year, how many deals did you do? And how much money did you make? Uh, 57 deals. 50, fifth, five, seven. Five, seven. First year. First year. And that, I think it was like 383,000 in commission is what it was. And you still drive a Ram 1500. And I drive a Ram 1500. I mean, the realtors drive German cars after they sell 10 properties. I just can't justify it. You can't justify I it? I can't justify You're it. You're not a car guy? I put it this way. I would buy a Ferrari because everybody thinks it's a, it's a Ferrari, but I'm driving the speed limit in that but bitch. Which, which Ferrari <laughs> would you buy? See, I don't even know, dude. I don't know you're not car guy. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, I would buy one because everybody else thinks it's cool, but I'm yeah. driving the speed limit in it. The, what's the reaction? Like, you know, you're Connor Kelly. You go to a uh, listing appointment and you're in your Ram 1500. What, do people say something about it? Dude, my Ram 1500 is so dirty. I just I saw that. <laughs> I haven't washed it in like eight months. People have said stuff, but like at the yeah. end of the day, like all my business comes through social media. A lot of my clients I don't even meet. They're wow. just like, oh yeah, send me the, I, like I just sold that townhome site in Merritt. Yeah. I haven't even met those guys yet. I'm meeting them today. Wow. They just say, send me the contract. <laughs> yeah, you've been doing stuff in Merritt. Well, how's that going? It's cool, man. How did you get into Merritt? So these, my clients are two, two dope guys. They have a bunch of property in Merritt. They've been developing out there for years. Yeah. And um, they're just 
you know, getting some of it off the books and freeing up some capital and yeah. they have, you know, three or four listings out there for me. Got it. Yeah. Yeah, I think let's switch up to rapid fire. I've got okay. some TikTok questions for you. Okay. It's going to be, you can answer them in like two sentences, three sentences. You can do that. Okay. Whatever you feel like you want to say, you can say that. You've already told me you drive Ram 1500, right. which I'm disappointed a bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I would lease maybe like a S class or something like that. Yeah. Maybe one day. I, I think you should get that. Yeah, I like Mercedes. I'd go Mercedes over BMW for sure. What was your first car? It was actually Mercedes. You but, had a Mercedes. But it was a 1987. Like, you know, the ones that look like boats. Yeah. And it's like a tanned color. Yeah. It was sick though. Was that was my first car. It was a V8. It's terrible on gas. Wow. So you made $350,000 first year. What was the second year income like? Uh, well, we're working on that right now, but. So this is your second year going? Technically my second year ends in like a week. In a week. Yeah. So this, if we were to count August to here, yeah. I don't know. It's last like 250, something like that maybe. 250. Maybe 260, somewhere around there, I think. You're making good money for two years being in the business. I think top producers right now, I don't think they made this much money. It was tough, man. Like the, the last year, like yeah. August to, to this August, because like I basically did no deals for like six months. Yeah. In the back end of 2022, it was really rough. But um, yeah, now things are rocking and rolling, man. So hoping to have a record year here by the end of the year. What do you think, what made you successful this early in two years? You've mm -hmm. made this much money. What do you think behind it is? I think I, I need it, dude. I think, I'm gonna quote Wes Watson here. Most people just want it, but yeah. like I actually need it to happen. Like I actually need it to happen. Like that's the difference. It's like I've, I've even said to my girlfriend, like I would literally rather be dead yeah. than not do what I actually want to do. Wow. That's, and that's the, the legitimacy, right? That's, Cause that's I, deep. That's why I, I, I post every day on TikTok, yeah. Instagram, YouTube ever. And I never miss on fricking anything. It's cause I feel like I, I need to hit it. Like I have to, you know what I mean? Yeah. What was, what would be your biggest regret in life? My biggest regret? Honestly, I should have just done this earlier, but, but it's like, you can't even really say that though, because I wouldn't have been successful if I didn't go through what I went through yeah. in plumbing that got me here. Right. Yeah. But if I had it my way, I would have became a realtor when I was like 21. Yeah, let's say someone, he's 19 to 22, just getting out of high school. What advice would Connor Kelly give them? Just like in, a life advice, not real estate yeah. advice. Invest in yourself. Don't even focus on making money, saving yeah. money. Reinvest everything into yourself. Buy coaching, hire a coach, yeah. buy courses, work on personal development. Just focus on you for like the next three to four years yeah. because you attract money. So the better you get, yeah. the more attracted to you money becomes, right? So just focus on making you better yeah. and the money will come. What does money mean to Connor Kelly? It's just a vessel of transferring value, right? So I just, I just want that money to be able to exchange it into other things that I want. I mean, what does money mean to me? I mean, it's freedom, basically. Money provides options and options give you happiness. Yeah. Well, what would be your dream house like? Right now, prob it's probably around a $3 million house. Yeah. It's, it's not like a brand new, like modern style. Yeah. It's more like warm and cozy kind of style, yeah. but it's a massive house for sure. In Abbotsford? Mm, I would do Abbotsford or I'd get something in White Rock. In White Rock. Yeah. That's where the money is going right now. Yeah. And then where do you see yourself in the next five years? What do you want to do? I'm going to be the most well-known re realtor in Canada and I'm probably going to be coaching full time. That's what I'm thinking. So coaching and are you going to be a TikTok coach or like a proper one-on-one -on -one coach? One-on-one -on -one coach, life coach, real estate, social media, whatever. I mean, a lot of stuff that I don't talk about is like, I don't have any vices. So like I, I don't smoke, I don't drink, yeah. I don't do any of that stuff. That would really help out. That would help probably 99% of the population. Like if, if people cut out all that crap, 
they would see, it's insane how, how much better your life instantaneously gets, yeah. how much further you can go with your life, how much more motivation and energy and how much better your mood is. So, I mean, that's, that's something that I can, I can literally tell people how to get out of their addictions. Like I've done it. Right. Wow. So that's something I want to teach too. Right. It's like cut out. Everybody has good habits. They're just yeah. letting the bad ones get in the way. Yeah. Right. So if I can teach you to get rid of your bad habits, all you're going to yeah. have left is good habits. Right. What is your bad habit right now that you have problem getting rid of it? Coffee. I probably drink too much coffee. How much coffee? Dude, I drink like four coffees a day. Wow. Coffee probably is a bad habit. Yeah. I'm, I'm disorganized. Yeah. I wish I was more organized. Yeah. I'm just terrible at it. <laughs> do you, do you, what do you think? Should realtors use CRM or not? What's your, what's your view on that? I think they should use a CRM for sure. I don't, but don't. I, I wish I did. So how do you keep, let's, you're getting, you told me that you're getting 50 calls a month and you get three or four deals out of it. Mm -hmm. How do you filter those? So let's say 50 calls. After 20 calls, you don't, you, you don't know where the calls are going. The call logs are smaller now. Yeah, I know. What do you do with that? Nothing. So they just, just, they follow me on social media. So they'll reach out again if they want to. But okay. They so. should be getting filed into a CRM and getting okay. followed up with. But I, I don't do that. Yeah. And the way, the way I've approached it now is just like, I don't like to follow up with people. Yeah. Right? Like when you're serious, reach out to me. Yeah. Let's make it happen. If you're not serious, cool. Reach out to me when you are. Now I've seen this as, you know, when you're a new realtor, you are calling a lot of people back and forth. They're not picking your call, which at some point when you're making, let's say a couple hundred thousand dollars, you feel disrespected. Yeah. Do you, do you feel that? Sometimes, but most of the time I, I, I get it. It's just, pe a lot of it is this, People just don't have, for lack of a better term, the balls to be like, yo, dude, I don't want to buy anything right now. I will let you know when I will. Yeah, I think. So instead they just ghost you and whatever. And yeah. they just, they just don't want to be straight up with you Yeah. and just like have to have that confrontational yeah. talk. Right. So it's not that they're disrespecting me. It's just that it's, it's them. You know yeah. what I mean? Like they don't have, they don't want to face that confrontation. Yeah. Right. So uh, I try not to take it disrespectfully. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it literally is disrespect. Yeah. Some people do literally just waste your time. But yeah. What, what's your take on our British Columbia real estate market? What's happening right now? What was your take? What do you think your prediction for the next year is 2024? What do you think? Where are we, where are we headed? I think the next year can go either way. It's very uncertain, but the next, Two years, I think prices will be higher. Do you think that? Yeah. Let's say they keep the interest rates where they are today. Do you still think the prices are going to go up? I still think they'll be higher. 5% Bank of Canada rate. I still think they'll be higher. Why, why is that? Because what will likely happen if that's the case, yeah. if, if you have, I know there's not actually 1.2 million people moving here. It's yeah. like 700,000 or something. Yeah. We're only building 200,000 homes. Yeah. So even if these people aren't buying homes, they still have to rent homes. Yeah. So what will happen likely in two years, even if home prices don't go up, rent will probably go up 25%. Yeah. And then what will happen is now the rent starts to justify the purchase price for the investor. Yeah. Right. So now, like right now, investors are cash flow negative 1,200 bucks. Yeah. Well, what if rent went up like 900? Yeah. Now they're in the cash flow negative 300 bucks. Now it starts making sense to pick up these properties. So either way, either the immigration that's coming in is going to buy houses because yeah. we're not, we don't have enough homes being built yeah. right now to meet the demand or they're going to rent houses. Yeah. The prices are going up somewhere. It's either in the rent or in the home price. Why do you think a lot of people, I've seen a lot of people, you know, they're like, they, let's put it this way. They curse the government that prices are, keep going up, the price keep getting up and up. What do you think, the, any suggestion for the government no, that you have? They screwed up. It's way too far gone. They really? messed everything up. And it looks like they're on drugs, right? Yeah. They, at the end of the day, people love to complain and be like, oh, the government should do this and the government should do that. Dude, the government cannot do anything at this point. This is a supply and demand free market. 
It's a natural ecosystem. Yeah. It's like if you go into the rainforest and start messing around with shit, yeah. you're gonna make one species extinct and then that goes all the way up the food chain. Well, what do you think happens when you bail out the banks and you bail out the auto industry yeah. and you print money and you give everybody stimulus checks, you're screwing around with a tropical yeah. rainforest, right? So now they've screwed around with stuff so much that there's no recourse. And then not only that, people are like, well, why are they bringing in so much immigration? Well, yeah. it keeps wages down yeah. so we don't get into this wage price spiral, but also our CPP system is broken too, Yeah. right? Because right now there's like, I think it's like five people pay for like one person's retirement. Yeah. Well, we as millennials are not having as many kids as the baby boomer has. No. So we don't have five people funding our retirement, nope. CPP. Nope. So the only way to fix that is to bring in more young immigration. Yeah. Otherwise the whole system just collapses on yeah. itself, right? So um, they have to keep bringing in immigration. Yeah. Builders don't build unless it's profitable. Yeah. So there's a massive problem right there, Yeah. right? Well, what do you think, if you had $1 million, where would you buy a property in lower mainland and why? Abbotsford. Abbotsford. And the reason why is because it's still relatively cheap. Yeah. And if I'm an investor, uh, the cash flow numbers are much better than Langley or Surrey. Yeah. It has historically appreciated exactly the same as yeah. Langley and Surrey. And yeah, it's it's cheaper, it's less risk up, it's less upfront capital, yeah. it's less risk, the cash flow is better. It's going to appreciate just the same. Yeah. Uh, you could probably say the same about Chilliwack. Yeah. But I just like Abbotsford better. I feel like it's a little bit closer than Chilliwack. And um, yeah, I don't. Yeah. Which like. what type of property? 1970s split level home on a 7,000 square foot lot with two suites. Makes sense. So as of right now, how many homes do you own? Just two. Just two. Yeah. One would be your principal residence and one is an investment property. Is the Windsor house, yeah. Is the Windsor house. Yeah. Next five years, Connor Kelly, how many properties do you want to own in the next five years? See, I don't, I don't have a property goal. You don't have it? I think my main focus is building the business. Yeah. Yeah. And then once, I'm, once my active income is so big, then yeah. I'll just buy properties 40, 50% down, whatever. For new real estate agents that are going to join the industry, what advice would you give them? Follow a blueprint, do it every single day, and do not miss. It's really that simple. Right now, so you are, I would say, top 10% agent right now, as per your income. What does your day in your life look like? So I wake up at 4.30 in the morning, I hit 20 burpees on the balcony. <laughs> I'll see you back. <laughs> I hit the 20 burpees. <laughs> Then I have breakfast, I watch some YouTube videos, I go to the gym, I'm in the gym by like 5.30. And then I'm in the office by like 8 a.m. Cause I come home, I make breakfast, whatever. Yeah. In the office by 8 a.m. Then I'm dealing with all my paperwork, listings, shooting my content, YouTube, like whatever I need to do um, is happening in the morning. And then the afternoon is like showings, appointments, listing appointments, um, whatever I need to do, picking up stuff, dropping off stuff, whatever. What do you like to do in your free time? Dude, I don't have free time, bro. Let's say you have one hour free time in a day, let's say. I might what would watch a like, uh, couple episodes or something with my girlfriend or fiance, sorry. Yeah, what do you watch? What do you like watching? Dude, we like to watch like chilly thrillers. We like to watch like people just getting murdered in cold blood. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first one. I yeah. Heard. yeah, you have the ground. What do you want to say? Whatever you want to say to the audience. This was our first mm -hmm. podcast. What do you think? Just give us whatever you have the ground. What do you want to say? I'm going to repeat this again. Everyone has good habits. They're just letting the bad ones get in the way. So for you to pick a blueprint, follow through on it, do it every single day consistently. You have to remove the bad habits because the bad habits are going to get in front of the good ones, right? You're going to cold call for two weeks in a row every single day. And then you're going know, like, to get smashed with your buddies. And then Monday rolls around. Your energy is going to be low. You're going to be feeling guilty. And you're going to be feeling shitty. And then you're not going to make the calls. And then you don't do it one day. That interrupts your momentum. That leads into two days. That leads into three days. Now you don't even want a cold call anymore. Now you're going to go to the yeah. next shiny object. And you're going to go knock on doors. Or you're going to run Facebook ads. Or you're going you're to try everything. Like, yeah. Realistically, it all works. Just pick one thing and do it every single day. Any recommendations do you have for this podcast? For this podcast? Yeah. 
Anything you want to say that needs to be improved? Do it so long that it would be unreasonable that you don't see success in doing it. That's Agent Kelly, guys. Thanks for tuning in. This is Billionaire Punjabi Boys. Next time we do this podcast with Agent Kelly, he's going to be a multi-millionaire for sure. And uh, I think he's going to be a top real estate agent. I see that coming and it's going to be great. And you guys are going to watch this podcast and see two great real estate agents sitting together and watching this. Thanks for tuning in, guys. See you on the next one. Peace. Peace.